لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Can you guys see what's on the board? Uh, what's on the screen? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah Ta'ala, we send out a homework. Um, Insha'Allah Ta'ala, I hope you guys have completed the homework or worked on it. Today, to save time, we're going to go straight to our subject. So last class, we talked about the bio. We talked about the life of the author. Um, and, and we talked about... Um, what the author he went through. And it's always good to go to look at the author of the book. So because that will help you get attached to the book. That will help you get close to the book. And inshallah ta'ala, today, before we go to the book, we're going to talk about the importance of that topic that the author he wrote about. So in the Lamiya, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he talked about aqidah. So we want to look at, at the importance of that subject. And, and we mentioned that the reason why we're going to start with Aqidah and why Aqidah is important and why we chose to, to start with this poem or this book is because to start with Aqidah and to talk about the affairs of Aqidah, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started his book with you find that the Qur'an, the Qur'an came and started with Aqidah as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us uh, the first revelation, the first revelation in the Qur'an, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق Read in the name of your Lord who created you. Iqra, that doesn't only mean you only read in the name of your Lord. No, which means everything you do in this life should be by the name of your Lord who created you. Worship should be for Allah, the one who created you. Dua should only be for Allah, the one who created you. Reliance, complete reliance should be towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created you. So Aqidah is how Allah, he the first revelation is about Aqidah. The first command in the Quran, the first command in the Quran, if you read the Quran from Alif Lamim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ The first command you will come to is the statement of Allah, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ أُعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ O mankind, worship your Lord. الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O mankind, worship your Lord. فَعَقِيدَة is the first command found in the Quran. Aqidah is found in the first revelation in the Quran. Also, Aqidah is found in when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the second revelation also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, O oh, the one who, cover, who covered himself with this garment, Qum fa'anzir, stand up and warn the people. Meaning, stand up here means what 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 you're gonna be given, what you're gonna what you're gonna spread is gonna be something very important. Qum fa'anzir, wa rabbaka fakabir, and your Lord glorify. Meaning, talk about tawheed, call people to tawheed, show how beautiful tawheed is, fix the people aqidah. Wa rabbaka fakabir, glorify Allah. Wa thiyabaka fatahir, and purify your clothing. Meaning, purify your intentions. Also, means purify your actions towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And avoid the idols. And avoid anything that is shirk. For you find that aqidah is the first revelation in the Quran is about aqidah. The first command is about aqidah. The second revelation was about Aqidah. 
And that should show us the importance of, of Aqidah. The second, also, Aqidah is the way of the prophets. The way of the prophets. That the prophets, when they spoke, and when they advised their people, it was, it was, it was about, it was about Aqidah. It, it was, it was about, it was about Aqidah. Uh, Prophet Nuh, Prophet Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِ We sent Nuh to his people. And Nuh, he said, إِنِّي لَكُمْ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ Nuh said, I am a clear warner, meaning I only want good for you guys. And the first thing he told them, أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Don't worship anyone or anything other than Allah. Prophet, uh, uh, Prophet Hud, when he went to his people, وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودًا قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُ Prophet Hud, he went to his people and he told his people, the first thing he said to them, اعبد, uh, uh, يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ uh, worship Allah مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُ There's no God, nothing more worthy to be worshipped except Allah. Prophet Salih, when he came to his people, you find that he, the first call he made was to Aqidah, was to, for Tawheed. وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُ Prophet Salih also came with that same message. وَإِلَىٰ مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبًا قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُ Prophet, uh, Prophet Shu'ayb, when he went to his people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the first thing he told them is, اعبدوا الله, worship Allah, ما لكم من إله غيره. For the prophets, the first thing they called to was aqeedah. The prophets, the last thing they called to was also aqeedah. The prophets, the last thing they called to was also aqeedah. Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam, Prophet Ya'qub, he said, أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءَ إِذْ حَضَرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتِ When Prophet Ya'qub was on his deathbed and surrounding Prophet Ya'qub was his children, his sons. إِذْ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ Prophet Ya'qub is on his deathbed. Around him is his sons. He's telling his son, مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ What will you worship after I die? What are you going to worship and, uh, until you leave this world? What, 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 what are you going to worship? They said, We're going to worship your Lord, meaning Allah. We're going to worship the same Lord Ibrahim used to worship, and Ismail used to worship, and Ishaq used to worship. One God, one ilah. وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ And we're going to submit to whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. For even Prophet Ya'qub, when he's on his deathbed, he's calling to this aqeedah. And he's making sure the aqeedah is sound and the aqeedah is good before he leaves this world. And by the way, this children of Prophet Ya'qub that he was talking to, they were prophets. They were prophets. But Prophet Ya'qub is addressing other prophets. Making and telling them مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ Making sure that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the prophets, when they were in prison, when they were in prison or when they were in a situation that's not very comfortable, they would still call to Tawheed and they would call to Aqeedah. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was in prison, what, did, what was the, and, and the two men, they came to him. What was the first thing he told them? What was the first thing he called them to? Two men came to Prophet Yusuf when he was in jail. And they said to all Prophet Yusuf, we had a dream. They didn't call him Prophet, but they said, we had a dream and you seem like a good person. Prophet Yusuf said to them, I will explain this dream to you. But before that, let me tell you something. And he started to call them to Tawheed. Ya sahiba yusidh. He said, oh people, what is this, what is this multiple guys that you, you guys are worshipping? 
you're finding the jinn, you're finding the jinn are even calling to la ilaha illallah and to enter aqidah. And also, the scholars also, they paid attention to this book, to this topic and to this subject. This is why we are learning this lamiyyah. This is why we're learning this poem. This poem is about aqidah. And, and many scholars before and after and continue to write on this topic. As a matter of fact, the great Imam, Imam Abu Hanifa, a book that has been attributed to him as well. It's called Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar, the greatest fiqh or the biggest fiqh. And this is a book that is about aqidah. For Imam Abu Hanifa, a, book, a, a letter or a treaty that is attributed to him is called Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar, the greatest fiqh. And this is a matter or the subject is, is about, is about aqidah. The aqidah is the foundation and the base of our faith. And if a person has any type of deficiency in his aqidah, if a person has any defect in his aqidah, then this will lead to him being deficiency as a Muslim. So if your aqidah is not sound and is not good, then you cannot be a good Muslim. Then there's going to be some deficiency as, you, as a Muslim because your aqidah the base, the foundation, is there's some weakness in there. But the stronger that the stronger that foundation is, the stronger Muslim you're going to be, and and the stronger your aqidah and and the stronger your aqidah will be. Any question about this slide? No, no. Now, what does aqidah mean? What is the meaning of aqidah? What is the meaning of, 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 of Aqidah? We mentioned that this Aqidah, it comes from the three letters Ain, Qaf, and Dal. And it has many different words or many different meaning, but they all point to the same thing. So Aqidah or you can also aqidah means something that is something that is tied up, arrabtu, something that you tie up like a knot that you tie. So when you have the knot, it's called uqad. The knot is called uqad. That's what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa min sharrin nafathati fil uqad," and from the evil of the women that blow over the knots. So Allah called the knots uqad. Why? How, how, how will this make us understand what aqidah is? Because this uqad, this knot that you tied up, this means that to understand aqidah, this means that your aqidah is something that you believe inside your heart. It's a belief that you have. And this belief is tied so tight and you don't have any doubt in it and you don't have any hesitation in it and you are very firm when it comes to it so this is the meaning of aqid also also allah subhanahu also uh, look also here innama al mu'minun the believers are only the ones who believe in allah and his messenger and then doubt not if you have any doubt about your aqidah, then you would not fall under, you would not fall under this, this ayah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they strive with their properties and their lives in the cause of Allah. Look, the human being, the thing that he loved the most is money and his life. These are two things that the human being loved a lot. Their life and, and their wealth as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you love wealth. They are willing to sacrifice their wealth and their, and their life. Okay? Why? Because they have a strong belief. If somebody ever doubted something, they would not uh, sacrifice their life or their wealth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse to show you that when you have your aqidah, it needs to come with no doubt whatsoever. And because they believed in that with no doubt, they were willing to give up their life 
and their wealth. إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم ثم لم يرتابوا. We apologize for the recording being cut. The ring is missing. Yeah, but no problem. And then here we have, uh, نعم. Now, so when Allah subhanahu wa taala He addressed the believers, He said they are ones that don't have any doubts. Look at how Allah talks about the hypocrites. إنما يستأذن كالذين لا يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر وارتابت قلوبهم. How did Allah describe the hypocrites whose hearts have doubts? Okay, وارتابت قلوبهم فهم في ريبهم يترددون. And they are in their doubts, are hesitating. They're going back and forth, back and forth with their doubts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he describes the believers, he says, these believers are ones that have no doubts. The hypocrites, Allah says, they are ones that they, they, have, they have doubts in their hearts. And they, and they are, uh, are, are drowning within doubts. Any question about the meaning of aqidah? Alhamdulillah. Now, what does aqidah? Now, also the word aqidah in the Quran carries different meaning as well. Aqidah in the Quran carries different meaning as well. In the Quran, aqidah means also a contract, a promise. Okay, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us, "Ya ayyuha al-ladina amanu, awfu bil-'uqud." Oh, you who believe, fulfill all your contracts. Fulfill all your promises. When someone gets married, they call it the contract of nikah, of the wedding, of the marriage. So, aqidah also means a contract. The root word of it goes back to a contract and a promise. Have we taken a promise with Allah? Yes, we have. We have promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will worship him and that we will take him as a Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took all of us out of Adam alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? And we all said what? قَالُوا بَلَى We said yes. شَهِدْنَا And we have testified to this. So we testify and we took a promise that we would not worship none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. So aqidah also means a contract, a promise. Also, aqidah means something that you do uh, on purpose. You intend to do it. What shows you that aqidah doesn't mean you do something, uh, it's like a, uh, something you do by accident or something you believe in by accident. No, something that is, that is done on purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا يُؤَاخِذُكُمُ اللَّهُ بِاللَّغْوِ فِي أَيْمَانِكُمْ Allah will not punish you for what is, what is unintentional in your oath. So, so if you took an oath unintentionally or you did not mean it, Allah will not take that into account. وَلَكِنْ يُؤَاخِذُكُمْ بِمَّا عَقَدْتُمُ الْأَيْمَانِ Look at this. The word also, you find aqidah also close to that word. عَقَدْتُمُ الْأَيْمَانِ goes back to the root word of aqidah. عَقَدْتُمُ الْأَيْمَانِ Allah says, but Allah will punish you for what for your deliberate oath for what you said on purpose for what you intended to do fa'aqida means something that is done on purpose aqida means a promise that we have taken with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala technically technically now aqida all of that was linguistic meanings now technically aqida means what when we say aqida in islam Aqidah is the matter of religion that the Muslim must believe in, in his heart and have, a, and have faith and conviction in it with no doubt. 
that which you believe in your heart with no doubt. And the reason why you don't have any doubt about your aqidah or your belief, because this came from Allah and his book and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is from Allah, from the Quran, and from the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So aqidah, aqidah technically means that which the Muslim believes in, in his heart. And he has conviction in it, and he does not have any doubt. And the relationship between the linguistic meaning and the technical meaning, you could say that, that the Muslim, you take your belief, you take your aqidah from the Quran and from the sunnah, and then you tie it. That belief, you tie that belief. You make a knot. Remember, aqidah also means uqad, make the knot. So you make a, a knot. You believe and then you make a knot and you don't ever untie it. You don't let no one come to untie it. You don't let the shaitan to put whisper to untie it. You keep your aqidah tight until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah to make us from those people. So this is the linguistic meaning of, of aqidah. What issues does aqidah talk about mostly? Aqidah are usually about matters of the unseen. Aqidah usually deals with the issue that are unseen. Aqidah tells us about Allah. Aqidah tells us about the angels. You have to believe. All of us all of us should believe that we have angels on our shoulders. When we, when we come to a circle of knowledge, we should believe that angels are there. But we don't see this, but we have to believe it with no doubt. The Quran, the books, you have to believe in all of the books with no doubt. Yes, you know, the books is something that we see but we have to believe that it was revealed from Allah. And we also have to believe in the other books as well. The Torah and the Injil. وَلْقَدْ أَعْتَيْنَا دَاوُدَ زَبُورَ عَنْدَ زَبُورَ You have to believe in the messengers, all of them, and the prophets. You have to believe in the Day of Judgment and everything that it comes with. You have to believe in the decree, the good of it, the sweet of it, and the bitter of it. So usually aqidah deals with that issue of the unseen. And because aqidah deals with things that is from the unseen, the source of aqidah needs to be a strong source. Since aqidah is usually with the unseen, the place where aqidah comes from needs to be, the source needs to be a strong source, a solid, strong source. And the sources of aqidah, are these five in front of us. The Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma' and the sound intellect and the Fitra as well. So these are the sources of, of Aqidah. And each one is very deep. Each one will maybe take 10 classes. But we will just mention the, this, our Aqidah comes from these five, the Quran, the Sunnah, and Ijma. These, the first three are called the, are called the main source. Yes, you, yes, you could put it, yes, in this order. So you can, the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma, these three are, are called the primary sources of Aqidah. The second, and then you have secondary sources, and that is the sound, intellect, and, and the fitra. These two are the secondary sources. Sound, intellect, and fitra cannot work by themselves. The sound, intellect, and the fitra, they need to match the Quran, Sunnah, and Ijma. So the, your intellect and your fitra are used as a secondary source. And our sources are well kept, not also, our sources are also well kept and preserved as well. And this is what makes our aqidah very unique. 
our aqidah, we don't use our you know rational over, we, we don't go straight to our intellect and try to use our intellect over the text the, 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 the sources that we mentioned the Quran Sunnah and the Ijma Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he preserved it for us so we don't have to outsource we don't have to look we wouldn't have we don't have to look for our aqidah outside of that Isn't the, isn't the only of ijma' from the past, or we can use the ijma' from the contemporary scholars. This also, I mean, this also the, the scholars, they differ in that. But the ijma' that we're referring to is the ijma' of the salaf. When it comes to aqidah, the ijma' is referring to the ijma' of, of the salaf, meaning the companions. And, and, and the companions from the first and foremost, the four khulafa rashidin. And then, the, and then the generation that came after the companions and the generation that came after the, the first three generations. Just like how this class is, is, is under the three generations. So when we say ijma' and aqidah, we're referring to the ijma' of the first three, three generations. And now, and, and yes, and some of the reason why we cannot use our intellect for aqidah by itself, or we cannot use logic for aqidah, is because our logic is different for everyone. Your logic will differ because of your age, because of your society, because of your experience. So you cannot try to use your logic and try to find out and, and, and about aqidah. Also, we mentioned aqidah is referring to the unseen. And if you try to use your logic, it doesn't, it doesn't work all the time. You know, we make wudu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when we are praying, we should make wudu. And we use water to make wudu. That makes sense. Water cleans you. So we're making, we're using water to wash our hands and our face and our arm. But if we don't have water, Islam tells us to, to use the earth, use the dirt. Do tayammum. Use the dirt. How is the dirt going to clean you? You are rubbing yourself with the sand and with the dirt. It's, 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 making, it's making your hand dirty. But you cannot come and use large logic and try to use your mind only for aqidah or in any matter of Islam. That's why Ali bin Abi Talib, Ali bin Abi Talib he said that if this religion was by our intellect or by our mind only, then when I make a wudu, instead of wiping over, uh, because when you're wiping over your socks, you would wipe the top. He said, instead of me wiping over the socks on the top, I would wipe the bottom because I am using the bottom to walk. And that is the place where the dirt is. So I would wipe the bottom of my, of my socks. But Islam tells us, no, you need to wipe the top. But you, we cannot come and try to use our logic for, for aqidah. Aqidah is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the source and it came to us and our job is to submit to it. Believe in it and submit to it. And for those people, and for those people that try to use their intellect when it comes to aqidah, Ibn Qayyim, he says, these people, they have an imam. Their imam is Iblis. For the people that try to use their intellect when it comes to aqidah, and if something doesn't make sense, they will reject it. And if it makes sense, they will accept it. Huh? Like, you know, a, a lot of people are nowadays, what they're doing is what they're rejecting, that Isa alayhi salam was, from, was, was the spirit of Allah. Some people, Muslims, they are rejecting. They're saying that the creation of the jinn don't exist. And, and many other. For Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi, he mentions that people that try to use their intellect, their imam is Iblis. Because he was the first one to try to go against the, the, the Quran. He was the first one to go against the text, the revelation, and to use his intellect. 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, when Allah told everyone, Ustudu li Adam, make sujood to Adam. So they all made sujood except for Iblis. And look, that was a revelation. He had to submit to it. He refused. He said, Ana khayru minhu. I am better than this. I am better than Adam, this creation. Khalaqtani min nar. I am made out of fire. Smokeless fire. Wa khalaqtahu min tin. And he's made out of clay. So he tried to use his intellect and he said, he said, fire is better than clay. Which in reality, by the way, Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned 50 reasons why that is not true. He said, fifth, mentions 50 reasons why fire, why clay is better than fire. He mentioned that clay you use to build. You, know, you build buildings with clay. Fire you use to destroy things. But he mentioned 50 reasons to show that even Iblis, his, his logic was, was wrong. So Ibn Qayyim says that whoever tries to use their logic for aqidah, their imam is Iblis. And then he says, Bi'sal muqallidi. What the evil one that you are following. The one you are following is very evil. It's bad. Bi'sal muqallidi wal muqallad. And how evil is the one who's following. So, Bits mean like, you know, what a bad or what a bad thing. Like what an evil one you are following and how evil are you to follow something like that? Bitsal muqallidi wal muqallad. Evil, the one that is, the one that is being followed and evil is the one who is following that person. For in aqeedah, you cannot just come and use your logic and say, it. if it makes sense, alhamdulillah, if it doesn't, I'm not going to accept it. Nor can you do kash, nor, nor can you come and say, I had a dream today. And you, and you try to explain about something in aqeed and say, I had a dream and that, this, and, and that we should believe in this and we should believe in that. You come up with something and when we say, where did you get this from? You say, it was revealed to me or I had a dream. Or you can say, it was uncovered, it was made uncovered for me. And you find that in a lot of a lot of people in in the Muslim world, where they would believe in something and they would say that this was made, this was uncovered for our Imam or our Sheikh seen something like it, or our Sheikh got a revelation for us to do this. And this is also we cannot do this in, in aqidah. The types of aqidah, the types of, of aqidah. There is a sound aqidah, sound correct aqidah. And this aqidah will always be sound and will always be correct because the way that it reaches us is through messengers and through revelation. So this aqidah comes to us through revelation and through prophets and messengers. But this aqidah will always be correct. The second type of aqidah is a false aqidah and will always be false. And, and there will always be many different of this type of aqidah. And it's enough to know that this is a product of a human intellect. This second aqidah is a man-made aqidah. So the first aqidah was through messengers and prophets and revelation. Second aqidah is through man-made aqidah. And this will always be a, this will always be a, a, a false aqidah. The third type of aqidah, the third type of aqidah is a aqidah that is sound in the beginning. In the beginning, it, it was sound and it was pure. But through time, it became corrupted and, and it changed. And this is like what happened to the Christians and the Jewish people and their belief that they came and they changed what Musa came with. They came and they changed what Isa came with. So this type of aqidah was sound in the beginning, was pure, 
but it got corrupted and it changed. But these are the type of aqidah. All of the aqaid will fall into these three. Sound aqidah, false aqidah, sound in the beginning and corrupted at the end. Now, and now, now, question now, where can we find this aqidah? Where can we find the sound and true aqidah? This sound aqidah can only be found in Islam. Because Islam is a religion that is protected and Allah guaranteed this for us. Allah tells us, Inna nahnu Indeed, it is we who sent down the Quran and indeed we will be its garden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we will be the one who will guard this Quran. We will protect this Quran from ever changing. And Islam is that is the aqidah, is the aqidah that is pure, that is clear that convinces our mind and convinces our heart it comes with evidence it comes with proof it has a sweetness that you can taste you know it has um you know it has that which matches the intellect and and the heart and that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he called it ruh ruh is the, the, the spirit وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا Allah called it light وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا For the sound aqeedah and the correct aqeedah will be found in, in Islam Aqeedah You should know that aqeedah also has different names has different different names and the scholars use different uh, uh, different names to, 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 to talk about Aqeedah. The first, they call it Aqeedah. And we know what it means. And, and, and the scholars, they wrote books called it Aqeedah. Al-Imam Al-Sabun, he has a book called Aqeedah to Salaf. Aqeedah as Salaf, Aqeedah Ashab, something like that. He has a book called Na'am, Aqeedah to Salaf wa Ashab al-Hadith. There you go. He has a book called Aqeedah to Salaf, the Aqeedah of the Salaf and the people of Hadith. Aqeedah to Salaf wa Ashab al-Hadith, the Aqeedah of the Salaf and the, and the people and the scholars of Hadith. Imam al-Bayhaqi, he has a book called Al-I'tiqad. Imam al-Bayhaqi, he has a book called Al-I'tiqad, meaning Aqeedah. Imam Al-Lalakai, he has a book called Sharh Usul I'taqad Ahlu Sunnah Wal Jama'a. Sharh Usul I'taqad Ahlu Sunnah Wal Jama'a. See, I'taqad Ahlu Sunnah Wal Jama'a. The creed of the people of the Sunnah. Sheikh bin Baz has a book also called Al Aqeed Al Sahiha. He has a book called Al Aqeed Al Sahiha. The correct and the sound Aqeed. But they, they wrote books called it Aqeer. They also wrote, called it Tawheed as well. They also called it Tawheed. Why did they call it Tawheed? Because Tawheed, this is a inshallah, very good point, inshallah. The reason why they called it Tawheed is because the most important part of Aqeedah and the best part of Aqeedah and the purpose of aqidah is to single out Allah. And tawheed means to single out. Tawheed means to single out. So they called aqidah tawheed. They called aqidah tawheed. And there are many books. Kitab al-Tawheed. Imam Bukhari, he has a, a, a chapter in his book. Under the chapter he says, at uh, Kitab al Tawheed, the book of Tawheed. Ibn Khuzayma has a book called At Tawheed, Kitab al Tawheed. You find that Shaykh Ibn Abdul Wahab has a book, the famous book, Kitab al Tawheed. 
شخص صالح فوزان هذا بقول عقيدة التوحيد لعقيدة أن التوحيد ابن مندى هذا بقول also كتاب التوحيد but you find that many scholars you find that many scholars called aqida also tawheed also they called this science also the sunnah they called it also a sunnah why did they call it sunnah because after the third century there were many deviated groups and sects that 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 came about and they started to reject the sunnah of the prophet they started to reject the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi alayhi wasallam and they would attack the sunnah of the Prophet. So the scholars, they came and they authored books and they called it sunnah. Sharh al-sunnah. And, and the sunnah here means the belief, the aqidah. Because Umar bin al-Khattab, he said, Man taraka sunnah faqad kafar. Man taraka sunnata faqad kafar. Whoever leaves the sunnah, he disbelieves. And sunnah means the creed here. Also, they called, also they called aqidah sharia. They also called it sharia. Why? Because what sharia means? The water source. Sharia means the place where people go to drink water. Right. Fa, fa, it means that Sharia refers to the entire religion, all of the religion. We can call it Sharia. And the scholars, they author books. They author book and they call it Sharia. Also, they call it Iman. Also, they call it Usul al deed Also, they call it Fiqh al-Akbar. For these are different names for the same subject. And that is for Aqidah. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, we'll, we'll stop here because it's 10.30 now and the next part we'll talk about the virtue of Aqidah. And perhaps we will save that for next class and we will try to mention about 30 benefits or 30 points that shows the importance of and the virtue of studying Aqidah. So our next class will mention about 30 points about the blessings and the virtue of, of Aqidah. And today in our class, today in our class we talked about how the Quran started with Aqidah and the prophets and the companions, even the jinn started with Aqidah. We talked about what Aqidah means linguistically. We talked about uh, how, how when Allah described the believers, He said they have no doubts. When Allah described the hypocrites, that they had, Allah said that they are ones whose heart is full of doubts. We talked about the different meaning of aqeed in the Quran. We talked about the linguistic meaning of aqeedah. We talked about the matters of aqeedah. We talked about the sources of aqeedah. And we talked about um, why we cannot use our intellect or our logic by itself when it comes to aqeedah. And then we talked about the different types of aqeedah and where we can find this aqeedah. And then we talked about different names for the signs of, of Aqidah. So now, Sheikh Hussein, Brother Hussein is asking, why is it called Fiqh Al-Akbar? It's called Fiqh Al-Akbar because Fiqh means understanding. Fiqh means understanding. The, the Brother Hussein is asking, say, why, why is it called Fiqh Al-Akbar? It's called Fiqh Al-Akbar because Fiqh means to understand. That's why Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, he made dua and he said, Yafqahu qawli. He said, Yafqahu qawli. Oh Allah, make it easy that my people will understand what I say. Yafqahu qawli. So they can understand. Okay? They قالوا يا شعيب ما نفقه. They said to شعيب ما نفقه كثيرا مما تقول. They said that we don't understand what you're saying. So fiqh means to understand. But Imam Abu Hanifa, he called it fiqh al-akbar to show that this is the greatest and the most blessed thing to understand. Why? Because if you have it, you have Jannah. If you have Aqidah, then Jannah is for you. 
فهي قاعدة ثق الأكبر because this is the greatest understanding we can have the aqeedah that is sound and then corrupted can it be found in the Muslim yes it can find in the Muslim the aqeedah that is sound and then corrupted can it be yes it could be found in the Muslims as as well it could be found in, in the Muslims as as well inshallah ta'ala we will end here and we want to remind uh, uh, please everyone to try to use uh, uh, um, try to whatever notes you have to try to share it on that folder and on that file and let's try to be very active in that so that we are always helping each other and encouraging each other to seek knowledge you know and you are more than welcome to add things that i have not mentioned you know and we can benefit and and and, and learn from one another um and and try to also submit you know the the homework that uh that one is sent out inshallah uh but please also try to whatever notes you have uh add to that file let's be very active so that we are encouraging each each other and i'm and i am avoiding of ma of making the class long i want to make it inshallah kind of short take small information and then we save it for the next class inshallah we'll take slow so that we are not talking a lot and people are not getting tired and they're not getting bored and and then we don't want information to just pass us we want to whatever we mentioned even if we mention just one hadith and we stick with one hadith and we understand it that is better than 10 a hadith being mentioned uh for inshallah we will stop here subhanakallah wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik inshallah we'll see you all next class at 9:30 inshallah on Tuesday. Salaam alaikum. Any question? If there isn't, alhamdulillah. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.